Hey there, welcome to this week's superhero simulation. We're going to be taking a look at heat transfer around Mr. Freeze. I've been spending a lot of time on superheroes and feel like the supervillains are getting a bad rap, so I thought I'd spend a little bit of time on them. As always, feel free to reach out to me. One person actually did last week, I was super excited. James.herzing at Autodesk.com. Follow me on Twitter at either of the handles. I'd also like to take a second to thank Kate Tapashapalapalapa for letting me borrow her Yeti. So, who is Mr. Freeze? Or should I say, Victor Freeze? Well, I think we all remember the Governator playing him in one of the Batman movies. There he is, all blue and creepy with a big jewel. You know, doesn't look all that scary. I only recognize the Governator when he's looking at me like that. Ah, oh, look at that face. <laughs> what a creepy, creepy guy. Well, there's a Mr. Freeze that I can get behind. Nice and cartoony, evil beady red eyes. But what do we really know about him? First, we know that he keeps his head at a negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. At least in one version where he's actually an alien instead of just a frozen person, uh, that's the temperature he keeps it at. That's the only thing I could find, so that's what we're going with. He also hangs out at room temperature. He's always chasing after Batman, being angry outside, so... You know, the sun's out. He stays warm. And also, he has a really cool pet polar bear. Look at him! And that polar bear somehow needs to wear a helmet as well. Uh, I'm not sure why, but if any of you know why the polar bear needs a helmet and suit, please let me know. So what parameters do we need for this analysis? Well, like we said, negative 50 on the inside of the uh, helmet there, the glass helmet. 70 degrees on the surface of the air outside around his body and then the various materials that we're going to be using to create the suit. Keep in mind, that's bulletproof glass there. Alright, so starting out in Fusion, like we so often do, because, I mean, everybody uses Fusion for their designs, or at least maybe they should, let's go ahead and export a file and open up CFD. When we do so, we can browse to our file, choose to open it, give it a file name so that we remember what we called it, and then choose to create. With that, we can go ahead and define our materials. So we have seven parts listed there. Uh, we're going to start by making sure that we define things as solid. Part one is going to be steel. We now select the body and that fancy belt looking thing. I don't know, maybe that controls his temperature. We're going to set that to solid and not steel this time. We're going to make that titanium. Really strong suit apparently. Very expensive as well. How about those arms that he has going on there? Uh, make those solid as well. We got this down at this point. Apparently I don't on the screen though. And let's click aluminum. Now just two parts to go. Uh, we see one we can't see. We're going to edit that and we're going to say that air is fine. So that's like the air inside of the helmet. And we also are going to have to define the glass. So if we go down there to part six, edit, and change this to, yep, a solid, and define it as glass, we will be good to go. That air, we're going to actually choose to suppress it because we don't care about it for this analysis. Now before we set up our boundary conditions, we're actually going to create an external volume as well. I've shown you how to do this in Sim, Stu in Sim Studio Tools before, but we're going to do it directly inside of Autodesk CFD for now. So by clicking external volume, I can just click on these arrows and drag them around. And this is creating the air around uh, Mr. Freeze that we're going to have at 70 degrees. And it's going to actually hollow it out anywhere that that suit is existing. So next we have to apply our boundary conditions. And so as we discussed uh, previously, all of this air is going to be 70, we'll say roomish temperature. Uh, I don't know, maybe he's hanging out in Pittsburgh and it's kind of a nice day, so it got up to 70. We probably like to live there most of the year uh, when it's cold, but that's fine. Anyways, temperature, Fahrenheit, 70. Click Apply. If you missed that, don't worry. We're going to do the same thing here once we hide the parts that we don't have any interest in, and we're going to apply a temperature to the uh, inside of the glass helmet as well. So if we hide the body, we can scroll around, choosing uh, choosing these interior surfaces, we can then define another temperature. So you can see all of them are highlighting in red. No need to hold just the uh, shift key down in this program. And now we can choose the edit button, 
And for the type, change to temperature, make sure to put it in Fahrenheit, and let's put a minus 50 there and click apply. So now a little right click and show all and all of our materials are defined. All we have left to do is press solve and one thing that we need to point out is to make sure that we turn on heat transfer. So if we don't do that it's not going to do any heat transfer calculations for us and since we don't have any airflow going on it would be a pretty worthless analysis. So look with that, look at that great great result. Oh man, a lot of blue and purple and green, Roy G. Biv going on. Uh, let's modify this little plane a little bit and you can just see on the outside of the air it's nice and red and as we get into the suit where it's cold uh, at his head if we move that a little bit you can see that it now drops down to the negative 50 to 0 and you can see it warming up as as it goes so you don't want to get too close to Mr. Freeze a little sneak peek into next week I'm actually going to show us how to take these results and drop them into simulation mechanical and do a thermal stress analysis. Uh, typically I think of thermal stress as something where uh, something's getting too hot and expanding. Well, it can also be contracting too. It's going to be awesome. Again, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.